What we're going to be going over here is a linear optimization problem, and really it's to do with production planning. Okay, so this is the situation we're going to have here. We're going to have three different products that we're going to be manufacturing here, product P, Q, and R here. And for those uh, three different products, what we want to do is we want to maximize the profit on those products here based on this uh, linear optimization that we're going to be doing here. So we're going to have the three different products here and the only cost that we're going to be looking at on these products is going to be a material cost. Of course we have labor and overhead costs but because of the complexity here and the, we're just going to be looking at our material cost here and for and really what we have to do is we have to determine the production quantities here for these three different products also the material quantities that are required here for those three different products here and again we just want to maximize our profit here so we're going to have the product quantities here whatever revenue we generate here we're going to have to subtract the material price or the material cost to come up with the maximum profit okay so we're going to start with our objective function here and look at how we set up a linear optimization program here to do this a uh, profit maxim maximization here okay so we're going to start out with uh, our sales uh, we're going to have a sales price here and a maximum sales quantity that we planned here for those three different products p q and r here so our sales price what we got 90 here for p so that goes up into our objective function here 90 times p here plus our q quantity uh, we have a sales price of 100 here so it's 100 times each quantity of q that we sell here plus we have a sales price here for a product r here of 70 so 70 times r okay so that's our uh, going to be our objective function for our product quantity that we're going to have to define here and then one other thing we're going to have maximum sales quantities here for each of those items here now those are going to be key here when we look at our optimization problem to see if we exceeded uh, with our optimization if we we actually exceed our maximum sales quantity here. We're not including that into our optimization problem at this point. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is this material quantity. Okay, so what I've done here, I've got it laid out here. We're going to have uh, four different materials, M1 here through M4, and then they're going to be looking at the parts here per unit for P, Q, and R, different products. And then we're going to have a unit cost here for each one of those materials here. Okay, so as far as our objective function for our material requirements, uh, we're going to look at that unit cost that, uh, amounts here. So let's look at it. For product M1 here, we have a unit cost of $20. So going up to our, our objective function here for material quantities, we're going to have $20 here times whatever quantity we have required here for M1. And remember, these are all negative. These are all negative signs here, and that's being subtracted here from our product revenue here, just to see that here. Okay, so that's for M1. Now for M2, same thing. We've got a different part unit. Our total unit cost for our M2 for what uh, materials M2 is going to be 20 again. So we just go up to our uh, objective function here, 20 times M2. And same here for M3, we also have 20 here. Go up to our objective function, 20 times M3. And But for M4 here, we actually have unit cost here of $5. Again, go up to our objective function, put that in here. Okay, so we've defined our objective function here. Uh, what We're going to have to determine the product quantity here and also the material quantity here. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to come up with the constraints here for our parts usage here. And that's going to come right off, we'll look at it here, it's coming off our table here, our material requirements versus our parts units here. Okay, so the constraints for this optimization problem is this here. So we got those four different materials, M1 through M4, that we have to deal with here. And we're going to, those constraints are going to be based off our parts per unit here, or the requirements on parts per unit. Okay, so for M1, well, P here is just one here, so we just have one P. And what we want to do here with this constraint, we want to come up with the ag exact amount of material we're going to need here. So we only have P here is using the only material here from M1. So what we want to do is we're going to take P, whatever we have here for our quantities of P, and subtract from it M1. And what we're going to do is we it's going to have to be at least greater than or equal to zero here. We can't put less parts into the product because it wouldn't be right here. And we don't in this case we also don't want to put more parts into the product here. Okay, so that's how we set up our constraints here. And then for M2, 
we have one p here one part here required for p and one part here for required for q so same thing for our constraints p plus q one one required here for each and then we want to subtract from it the our m2 quantity here so we're going to come up with the exact quantities that we need here and then for m3 coming off our table we got what one q and one r so q plus r here minus again m3 and that again all these have to be greater than or equal to zero because we can't have any less material in this case here and then for m4 again off our table here p uh, product part product p uses one of m4 here so p again minus m4 here it has to be greater than or equal to zero okay so what we're going to be doing here when we're talking about linear programming here when we set up our linear functions here for our linear program really these signs are critical these inequality signs here how you determine those inequality signs because what we want to do in this case uh, they must be in the right direction here for our understanding at least when we set up our problem because the question is here do we want to change these inequality signs greater than or equal to to inequality equal to and of course with our material constraints we want to change it to uh, the exact quantities here so we're going to have to in our linear program we're going to have to have this equality constraints uh, constraint here at equal signs. So really, are we want to change this inequality here to inequality? And the question is going to be uh, yes here. And by changing our, uh, just really changing our constraint to an, an exact equation here. So we're looking for the exact quantities that are required here so, uh, for that material. So we're going to have to use as equality here. So that's the key point here. And we'll look at that when we set up our linear program here, because we could have put on less than or equal to, and that would not be correct here when we're setting up our equality constraints. Okay, so those are our constraints here as far as our material usage here. Okay, so let's go up here and get a little bit of understanding of what we're talking about here. Rather than just looking at numbers I have shown here on a 2D graph here, uh, that profit equation here. And I'm showing it here there. Different, our quanti our different products here, less our different materials here, those difference is going to equal our profit here. And really what we're looking for is that optimal product mix here between Q, quanti uh, product Q, P, and R here. And the key in this example here is the fact that we have a linear relationship here on that profit relationship here between those three different products. And again, we want to come up with the optimal product mix. So looking at it just in terms of a 2D graph here. Okay, so if we go down here and just expand on that, look at in terms of a 3D graph here, we'd have pretty much the same thing here. Just to get a better understanding of what we're talking about. Again, it's a linear relationship as far as our profit function goes. And then I'm just showing it here, Q, P, and R here. Each Q would be like this light blue um, 3D a profit curve here, and then Q would be like, or P would be the red one, and then R is this one down below here. So just to get an idea of what's going on here, to give you a little bit of a understanding as far as the linear relationship that we're looking at this profit. Okay, so next we'll move on here to look at our other constraints here for the uh, production uh, machining operation on these different products. Now for our production capacity constraints. Now each of our products, P, Q, and R here, are gonna be going through four different machines or machining operations or machining centers here, A through D here. And they're gonna use the capacity from these different machines here as I'm showing here in the table here. Okay, so uh, what is available to us, and this is in terms of minutes here for each of our machines, A through D here, we have available total minutes here of 2,400 here. Okay, so based on our table here, now we can come up with our machining capacity constraints in equation form here. So I've got, again, showing down here our different machines A through D here, and uh, our machining capacity constraints are taken right off our table up here. So just looking at our machine A here, uh, well, it's 20 minutes here for product P, 10 here for Q, and uh, R uses 10 minutes here as well here. And of course, we have only 2,400 available minutes for a here in each of our machining centers. So going down here, just looking at our capacity constraints, again, just 20P, 
20 minutes times whatever quantity of P here plus 10 minutes times whatever quantity of Q plus again 10 minutes times every whatever quantity we have in R here has to be less than or equal to 2400 minutes. So why do we say less than or equal to here? So we can't say it's greater than or equal to because we only have 2400 minutes available here. But we could use less than 2400 minutes here if our optimization problem comes up with the case here where based on our quantities that we use here for P, Q, and R, if it would be be less here. Okay, so that's our that's our rationale there here. So again, just taking off our table here for the next um, B, C, and D here, just take whatever minutes you have apportioned here and just uh, bring them down to your, your constraints here. I'm showing here in each of those quantities here. Just so looking here at D, just going over that is 10, 15, and zero here for R. R doesn't go through that machining center here. So you just have 10 P here, uh, P here, 15 Q here, and then zero R here. Again, less than 2,400 minutes. Okay, so we have to, let's, again, we have to, when we're using linear program, we have to get our directions here on our inequalities correct here. So it must be in the right direction here. It has to be less than or equal to here in the case where we have these machining centers or machining capacity because we can't create more capacity than we actually have unless we go out and buy more equipment. So the question is, again, do we want to change this inequality here to an equal, an equal sign or an equality here. Well, in this case, uh, we don't want to do that here because the rationale is we may be using less minutes or less total time here uh, the, than, we, than is available here. But we can only use up to the total minutes here. So you don't want to put in equal here because it's going to be, you'd get a wrong answer here if you do that here. So you just want to leave your inequality sign here less than and equal to. Okay, so that's our machining capacity constraint here. Now let's just go up here and let's just look at it in terms of 3D here. It gets a little, looking at the numbers, if you, we plotted it out here, it gives us a little bit of understanding of what we're doing here. So again, just looking at our machining capacity constraints here, I really looked at those four different machines here, A, B, C, and D here for those three different products here. And I actually did a plot here, a plot. It's really a linear plot here. I'm just showing it in three dimensions here, but you can see it. It uh, gives you some feel for what we're talking about here when we're talking about linear optimization. So we got really uh, four different linear curves here. This blue one here, then we got one back here, and a light blue here, and we got a red one here. That would be our third one, and then our fourth one would be a green one here. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of understanding. Now, we'd also have to include our material constraints in here, but I didn't do that, but they would have to be loaded in here and plotted out as well here. Okay, so those are our machining constraints. And then if we go over here and we looked at, remember that profit function that we had here? I'm showing that again as a linear function here for product Q, P, and R here. Now, if we just marry these two together, because this is, gives us the answer, marry these two, uh, cons our constraints here with our profit function here, this is where we're gonna get the solution. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at the solution plotted out here. Now, you're gonna come up with something like this here. Now, my, solu my plot here, really those uh, machining capacity constraints, they should probably be further up here, somewhere along our uh, linear profit or profit line here. Probably not correct, but you get the idea of what's going on here. You're gonna get some intersection here with all those constraints, our machining constraints, our material constraints. They're gonna intersect with our profit here, our profit line. And actually this profit line includes our material constraints as well here. Okay, so looking at it in those terms here. All right, so that just gives you a little feel here when you're looking at what you're trying to do here with a, a 3D function here. All right, so then the other thing is here, Just we're gonna just move over here and we're gonna look at it. We're gonna go and actually lay this out here in matrix form to get our, our solution here. And this is really a comp computer solution. So taking all those numbers that we have 
for those constraints here in our profit maximization function. We're going to come up with a maximum profit at $7,775. And then we're going to have a quantity here. It's a com we're, this is going to be a computer solution here. We're going to have a quantity for our product P at 77, Q at 11, R at 73, and then M1 through M4 here showing a 71, 77 through Again, the bottom here is 77 as well. Okay, so what you're to do here, you're going to use uh, some computer software. You might use Excel or any other linear programming software package here to come up with the solution. So you're not going to be doing this by hand. In this case, just to make a point here, I've used MapleSoft, the optimization package, and the LP solve linear programming solve solution here. And we're going to go and we're going to look at the matrix setup that for this here when you have to set it up uh, for linear programming when you're feeding it into your software to come up with a computerized solution. Now let's go through our linear programming setup that for our problem here. And this setup would be probably the same for most linear programming uh, softwares that you'd be looking at. Okay, so the first thing you're going to have to set up a vector here for the profit or that objective function. And all you do is just take your coefficients from this objective function here and enter them in a vector form here where I've got the three different product coefficients shown here, 90, 170 and so forth and then those material coefficients here m1 through m4 and just remember you have to put in the minus sign here because you're subtracting that material cost here from your revenue here okay so that's pretty much for your objective function now let's move over to the main body here where you're going to have a matrix set up here you're going to have eight rows here and seven columns and let's look at where we would have got our setups here Okay, so first off, let's look at the case here where we got that as those machining constraints or the machining capacity constraints for those uh, four different machines here, A through D. And you just enter in your uh, matrix here. Just take the coefficients right off your uh, capacity constraints here, like 20, 10, 10. Here, just match them up here, 20, 10, 10, and do that for each of the rows here. You've got four rows and three columns here. Okay, so that's easy enough to do. And then uh, the uh, 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 maximum capacity here, 2400 here. This is going to be a separate vector that you're going to be put up. So for the machines A through D here, you're going to have a maximum, maximum capacity here of 2400 minutes in this case. So you'd enter this in a separate vector. All right. And then really what we're going to have to get down to is what they call the slack variables here. We either deal with surface or slack variables. And you can see for our machine capacity, we're going to have a whole bunch of zeros here. But let's understand what, they're, what they are. And we're really looking at this diagonal here. Okay, so remember when I talked about earlier this uh, inequality here. In the case here for our machining capacity, we have a less than or equal to sign here. So this is the this is what we, we we have to understand here. So I've got it laid out here in a little table or a decision table that we'd have here to un make the understanding. And we're going to look at these uh, less than or equal to signs here and how we would enter, in this case, those zeros here, why we entered those diagonals of zeros. Okay, so let's look at the case here where we have the less than or equal to. So if we're less, if our linear program is set up here where we want a less than or equal to, and we don't want to change it. We want to leave it at less than or equal to or no change. So we're not going to add any variables. We're just going to put zeros in those columns that we're looking at here, at both slack and surplus variables. There's no change here if you're just going to leave it at that here. And that's what we've done here. We just want to leave that sign here as less than or equal to here. But let's look at the case here. If we want to take this less than or equal to sign here and change it to uh, equal, we want to make an equality on all of these uh, function or these equations here. This is the case where we'd be adding a slack variable, a plus one in this case, and there would be no surplus variable here. And we'll look at the surplus variable next here. So in this case, if we want to change from a not uh, less than or equal to here to a just plain equal and equality, then we would have gone down here and we would have used a plus one. We'd have put a one in here, one, one, and one. We'd have that diagonal with ones here. But in our case, we just wanted to leave it at less than or equal to here. So that's our guidelines here. So we didn't change it to the equal uh, to a equality here from this inequality less than or equal to. So 
we entered zeros here. And just remember, uh, for the number of constraints, you're going to have the same number of slack variables here. So if we had, uh, we got four different equations or constraints here, we're going to have four different slack variables. In this case, we have none here. Okay, so that takes care of our first case here. We have the less than or equal to. Now let's go down and look at our other constraint here. And those have to do with our materials, M1 through M4. And then off our constraints here, uh, just take the coefficients, just as we did above here. The, for each of those equations here, we just put, entered the different coefficients here. Three columns here, four rows here. But this is where things change here. Now this is the case here. Remember, we're going to be dealing with what they call a surplus variable here. And those are going to be those minus ones that we have on this diagonal here. And let's look and understand that. This is just the opposite. Now remember that decision table that we looked up above here? So in this case, if you want to, you have an equality here, in this case right here, we have greater than or equal to here. We're looking at just the opposite case here. If we want to leave this alone, we want to leave this at greater than or equal to, we wouldn't make any, we're not changing anything. So we'd have enter zeros here for our slack variable or zeros here for our surplus variable here. In that case, we would have just had a whole bunch of zeros across here, just like we had up on the top here. Everything would be zeros. That's if we didn't want to change this equality here to any, we didn't want to change it. So we just put in zeros here. But in our case here, we actually wanted to change this here because of that material constraint here. We want to change it to inequality here. So the greater than and equal to, if we change it to the equal or the equality that we're looking at, we don't put in what they call a slack variable. We put in a surplus variable. The only difference between a surplus variable and a slack variable is the sign here, just to make our sign convention straight here. Okay, so in this case, we wanted to bring the greater than or equal to, we want to bring it back to just plain equal to. So we're going to put in a negative surplus variable, and that's really just a minus one. So that's exactly what we've done here. Minus one right on our diagonals here. Across, we have the, the minus ones here. And that really converted our greater than or equal to uh, equation here to just a plain equal to equation. Okay, so those are the general guidelines that we're using. And then again, uh, just remember, you cannot, if you, you, when you're setting up these programs, you're not going to use a greater than or a less than sign. You got to have a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to or an equal to here. But just understand when the, the idea is here, you have to know your sign convention when you initially set up your constraint equations here. So that's why we looked at it in that case. Okay, so that's pretty much the answer for setting up our matrix here. We have those coefficients here. We actually have the three columns here and we've got what? eight rows here. And the top uh, rows here was for that machine capacity. And the bottom rows here was for our material constraints here. And then remember, we had our slack, uh, zero slack variable. We wanted to leave our equality the same, less than or equal to. So we just had a whole bunch of zeros here in our diagonal and along with all our other uh, numbers here or other uh, slack variables, as you'd say, but we're really looking at the diagonal. But then with the surplus down below with that constraint where we changes our constraint from greater than or equal to, we just change it to equal to, so we have to put those diagonal here and minus ones here. And then the other thing here is just remember the um, this other vector. Remember we had the, the, uh, the inequality here. We couldn't be greater than 2400 here for up above where we had all of those. In this case, we're if you go back to our constraints, we set, we set them equal to zero here. So that's where we would have sent. This is a separate vector here that we have, but we have a whole bunch of zeros entries here because that comes off our constraint equations here on our table for our constraints, just so you understand that. And then finally, to uh, summarize what we're looking here, uh, with this linear program, once you make all your entries, and there are some other entries that you're going to have to make, your bounds entries and that, depending on your software package and so forth, and you'd have to make those entries. But once we made our entries and made our entry, again, we hit our go button here or enter button, and we would have got some results here on that linear program that we put in. And we just talked about those before. Maximum profit here, $7,775. And then we have our PQR. And then our material quantity showing over here. Here, 
Okay, so what we want to do is just understand our results here. So what you're going to have to do is, this is what we're going to, we're going to substitute back in those equations here. We're going to substitute back into our machining capacity equations here to find out if we, we've got any bottlenecks, if we got exceeded or we're meeting some capacity, capacity constraints. And we are for uh, machine A and B here. If we go back and we enter those all these P, P and Q in our quantity, 77, 11, and 73, we entered them in our equation of our mean machine capacity equations here. We're going to see we're bumping up against our constraint here of 2,400 total minutes here. If we may go back and make those entries here to check those entries. Okay, so that's where we're going to make, we're going to check our constraints. And of course, you check them for all your equations. But in this case, we're going to come up with some a and B here, machines A and B are giving us some bottlenecks because we used all their available capacity. It's entirely used. And then we can look at just our quantity, our production of, in this case, uh, product R here. Just going back to that maximum sales quantity, product R, we're sitting at 60 here. We've got a limited we've limited by our market here. We can only sell 60 of them, at least that's what we're projecting here. So R our linear program says we are maximizing our profit here when we sell 73 here. So 60, we're coming up against it. We're not going to be able to maximize our profit here because we're sitting at 73. Now, if you check your other ones, P at 77, Q at 11, you can see we have maximum sales. P here at 100, Q at 40. So we're all right for P and Q. We just run up a with a problem here for R. Okay, so that's basically what you want to do here. And then one last thing here. I did use, I'm using MapleSoft here, their software package. Now, we could avoid all those uh, matrix entries and so forth. If we could just, they make it very simple here where you can just enter your objective equation that we have here, and then you put in your constraint to either the, actually, that uh, those constraint equations that we looked at. And in this case, you can just put in the actual equal signs or greater than or equal signs and so forth here. And then you'd also put in, I'm just showing them here. We're not going to go through them all, all those constraint equations here. You can either put greater than or equal to less, whatever it is. You just put in whatever it is, then you don't have to worry about all those uh, slack variables and so forth. And then you'd have to enter in some non-negative, make sure everything is non-negative in this case because we can't produce uh, minus quantities. And then you'd also have to set in some limits and so forth, depending on your software package. But those are the options you have here. And we just went through really to get an understanding about how we'd enter our uh, set up a matrix here, a linear programming matrix based on the uh, problem that we had. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion.